Today I want to do something that a lot of people have requested that I do once again. I did this a while back and it seemed like everybody really loved it, so I thought I'd do it again. Whether you're an old time fan of the show or you're new to the show, we found a lot of things on this channel. So today I want to present to you five of our favorite things we've ever found while filming at the NES Pursuit. Not necessarily the most rare, but some of our favorite and yes, usually pretty good come ups while filming the NES Pursuit. Here we go! This first one is from way earlier on when we first started filming the NES Pursuit. This is episode eight called Super Scoping A Merry Miracle. And the reason it's called that is for two reasons. There's a super scope, which I'll get to, but also we found our first miracle piano in the show, which if you watch the show, we ended up finding a bunch more of these down the line, but it was our first one and we were really excited. But my favorite find on that episode, and one of my better things that I really enjoyed was a complete in-box super scope. This had the casing, it had the plastic inside, it had all the foam inside, it had all the inserts, it had Battle Clash. Super Scope 6 is in here, the manuals are in here, the plastic's in here, the styrofoam's in here, it's 100% complete. Um, the guy said he didn't know if it works, it does work. It's one of those things, and I got it for $10, from a reseller, by the way, it's one of those things that looking back on now, I don't have it anymore. I don't remember exactly what I traded it for or whatnot, but I wish I did. Because when I see them now, I'm really like, oh man, I love like official Nintendo or Super Nintendo licensed stuff that's in like different shaped boxes. I know the Nintendo 64 has like that big Star Fox box and this, the Super Scope 6 box has that long square rectangular look and I, I love it. Well, I will take it. And when I see them now, they're a lot more expensive than what I paid. And again, I got this from a reseller for $10. Didn't have to really do any big bartering or anything. The guy that ran the booth was a reseller who knew that we had a show, but didn't really care. He wasn't like involved in the YouTube world or anything. He wasn't like hooking us up because we were uh, new YouTubers or anything. Um, I'm very excited about this, not only I think I might have paid 10 bucks just for the box, honestly, because it is a cool display. You just had it for 10 bucks, and this, if we want to do a little comparison, paid 10, worth about $80 right now. So, one of my more favorite things, wish, hope I can find it again soon, something like that for a good deal. I love it. Super Scope, I need you back in my life. Here we go! This next one is probably one of our most talked about ones in our show's history. This is episode 22 called Fire Branding Resellers. This became kind of uh, synonymous with our show. We were filming and it's very, uh, if you watch the old episodes, not so much now, but Ricky used to sneak off a lot. He used to sneak away from the camera and go buy stuff without really telling me and there was no footage or anything like that. So we'd always just kind of have to show or talk about it. But it was one of those ones where Ricky walked away and he walks to a booth and I'm like just, I'm like a, it's like a reseller with a lot of the same stuff you kind of always see. It was at Riverside Swap Meet. And I remember looking at him and I remember him holding Demon's Crest. And this is a reseller booth. Everything is priced pretty darn properly. There's no big deals happening or anything. And I remember in my head thinking, why is Ricky even looking at this? I didn't want to pull out the camera or start filming because I was like, there's, there's no point. It's going to be, you know, 80 bucks, 90 bucks, whatever the normal is, probably plus more. And then Ricky asked the guy, how much for Demon's Crest? And, and right when he asked, I could tell that this guy that was running the booth wasn't like the booth owner. He was like someone that was watching the booth, maybe like the owner's son while the owner was like running an errand or getting food. And it had like those stickers on it that usually like price code it. But the guy says, eight bucks. So the definition of getting caught slipping is what you hear a lot of people ask. What happened right now is I got caught slipping. I was standing right next to Ricky. And Ricky just got Demon's Crest for freaking $8. Right then and there, Ricky got Demon's Crest for $8, which by the way, loose right now was $75, a $75 game for eight bucks. And it's funny, we like filmed it after the fact and I know myself watching it back, I was being goofy with Ricky, but also I could tell that I actually was a little salty, uh, a little annoyed, I guess, because it was his second copy. I must admit, today is it. He already has one of those, too. See, Billy and Jay, they offer each other games when they have to. Ricky does. He just grabs it. I'm not Billy or Jay. I'm sorry, guys. He's Rude Ricky. That's his new nickname. Hey, it's different nowadays, you know, back then in the early days, we'd get a lot more excited about things and not necessarily be like, oh, you need a copy too, or you need a copy, I'll, I'll give it out. No, back then we were a little more like, uh, I 
I'm going to keep it for me. You'll find one eventually. So yes. stupid Ricky. That's the best <laughs> deal of the freaking weekend. It pissed me off. That was pretty cool. And as you guys, I don't know if it came across, but I was honestly pretty upset for a while. <laughs> so I was mad about it. I, uh, yeah. Well, I don't even want to talk about it. That's his second copy and I have zero. That's a big one on our show. Oh, Ricky, 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 Ricky. I'll, uh, I don't think I'll ever get that deal again. I was going to say I'll get him back, but I don't think I will. Here we go! Episode 24, Bobbing for Eggs. This was at our local, very close swap meet, OCC swap meet, where we filmed our first episode ever, by the way. And we went, to, we used to go to this guy all the time, this really cool older Asian gentleman. He sold a lot of video games that he would have like on like walls, kind of like with, with string in front of them so they wouldn't fall out. He also sold like homemade make your own keys here, one of those booths. And Ricky and I always would go to him and ask for Nintendo games and Super Nintendo games. And you know, we'd pay the normal price. And we never really asked for Sega games or the Genesis games or anything about them. This was early on when we were very focused on Nintendo only. I mean, heck, we named the show the NES Pursuit in the beginning, and it still is named that, obviously. But I remember one day being like, you know what? I want to ask about some other things. And I remember saying, how much for the Sega stuff? And he generically says, and this shows how early on in the before the collecting boom is, he goes, five bucks. And I'm like, oh, for the Sega, which Sega? Any Sega game, any Sega game is five dollars. That's just what it is. Sega stuff is five bucks. All uh, right. Sega, five dollars. Five dollars each. Five each. I hear a lot of things about this from uh, people like Pat the NES Punk and a lot of other people. So I know my buddy was there, Kingsley. He picked up a few things, like some pretty good deals, like Fantasy Star 2, I think, for five bucks. But I picked up Alicia Dragoon Loose for five dollars. And I remember during the time, it was like right after I watched Pat the NES Punk's review about it, which is one of his more uh, sultry episodes, more uh, risque episodes, if you want to say. And I was really sold on the game. The game is amazing. Let me tell you, that is a side scroller with some platforming elements. I've actually heard quite a bit good about it, so I think. I'll get it. Five bucks? Yeah, five bucks. It wasn't like a super insane score at the time. Yes, it was probably like $15 or $20 lower than retail or asking price. But right now the game goes for about $45 loose, a lot more complete. Uh, it is a really good game, a game definitely worth getting. It's one of those games when you look back, if you've had like a show or a game hunting thing where you're like, you just you just won't get that again. Not that it was like a crazy deal, but now it's one of those things where when people see the games, you know, that aren't the Marios in the Nintendo world or the Donkey Kongs or in the Genesis world, it's not like the the sonics you know people back then used to price anything with big names at a higher price but now people are starting to like you know if they see an alicia dragoon they'll probably price it out and look it up and see what it is now it wasn't like that back then it was a different time in the the early game hunting scene that's all why am i staring at the camera still here we go the next one is called Smokin' with Snakes. It is episode 28. It was a hot, hot day in Riverside. I remember it was just a boiling hot day. I remember I don't like the sunglasses I was wearing either. I don't know, but I just remember I don't like them now looking back on them. But we were at a reseller booth. Again, a reseller, which is a big point again. It never hurts to ask. You never know what you can get at a reseller's booth. And we were looking through games, kind of chit-chatting with the guy, you know, making friendly conversation as we always do, which is a huge tip, again, for anybody who doesn't do that. And man, we grabbed three NES games, and I'm talking like games that have always been priced at a decent price. The games are Donkey Kong Jr. Math, Chubby Cherub, and Wampum. We grabbed all three of those games, and those games have always, like I said, kind of held a decent value. And the guy went to look at his phone, and normally when you're on a game hunting show, or you know, just even without a camera, when you see someone, as soon as they pull out the phone to look up prices, it's almost like you just want to walk away. Like, ah, all right, I'm cool, man. Have a good day. No worries, but I'm out. Like, I already know what they're, you're going to say, and I don't want to pay retail. The Chubby Cherub alone, for argument, for resale-wise, and this is just Amazon sells the cheapest 27. Yeah. That one's the Chubby Cherub is showing 32. Okay. And the, and the other one, Wampum, whatever. This guy looks, he's looking at his phone and he's like, well, I see it's worth this, I could get this. He's telling us verbally what these things are worth. He's like, but I don't really wanna do this. I think he was saying like his wife doesn't wanna have to like ship them or look up the prices or whatnot or do all this stuff. I'm not even sure. But he says all of them, again, Donkey Kong Jr. Math, Chubby Cherub and Wampum for 25 bucks for all three of them. If you wanna do it, I'll give you all three for 25. Yeah. You know, you wanna do that? You know? Yeah. Because the bottom line is, for her to go, I, I'm, I'm trying to make sense of it for her, for her to go and take the time to do all that 
Okay. She's not gonna you know, so 25 is great. Right now, that's a really good deal. Right now, those games are worth $165 for all three of those games loose. And back then, I don't remember the actual retail, but it was probably like $80 or $90. So I feel like I want to say a big part of that one was just shooting the breeze, as they say, having fun, being real, sharing some laughs with the person. It loosens people up. It does it for us, too. You know how it is. Like I've said before, if a homeless guy walks up to you and goes, I got money. No. A homeless guy comes up to you and he's like, hey, what's up, dude? How are you? He's not really asking. Just chit-chatting for five minutes. It's like, hey, man, do you need five bucks for like a drink or something? I don't mean alcohol. <laughs> Anything. You know what I'm saying. But it's just one of those things where it's like, be nice, be kind, and rewind your VHSs. I, I struggle to be serious for long periods of time in a row. Here we go! This next and final one for the day comes to us at the very next episode, which is called It Is Finished, episode 29. Now this one, oh boy, this is not at a reseller booth. This is us just cruising around a swap meet. I think it was Cypress College, not at a reseller. It's one of those booths where you look down and you're like, yeah, there's a lot of random stuff, kind of a lot of random junk, but there is, there is an Xbox on the floor, so there's gotta be more. And I remember looking down and looking down at Ricky and Ricky automatically just kind of gets down, gets close to his hands and knees and he pulls up a white Sega Saturn. And at the time I was like, that, that's a Japanese Sega Saturn, right? For us, this is a really cool find because I'd say uh, good work because we don't run across them. That's the first I've ever seen it out in the wild. So good job, Ricky. <laughs> it's uncommon to find like Japanese stuff at swap meets unless it's like at a reseller booth because they're specifically looking for those things. This person just had it somehow, some reason, and it was there and they had it on the floor. Is that this one? Do you have the controllers or anything? Ricky opens it up, by the way, and X-Men vs. Street Fighter was in there. That's a great game to have along with it. Also, Ricky looks around and he finds an arcade stick, a Sega Saturn arcade stick that's compatible, X-Men vs. Street Fighter, and the white Japanese Sega Saturn. Ricky, I remember, starts asking the price and he says 25, they say 25 bucks. And I remember Ricky was like conversing with the lady in Spanish. And again, I don't, I don't know what he was saying. Still to this day, I put some like silly subtitles and I have no idea what they were saying to this day. But Ricky ended up getting it all for 20 bucks. All of that for 20 bucks. Si, si, si Simone. Ricky is getting it, 20 bucks. We ended up getting a controller with it, a joystick type. So that's a really good deal. And right now, all that together is like worth like a hundred bucks. I'd say almost exactly at a hundred dollars. And the crazy thing about it, and as you might know, nine times out of 10, when you're getting disc based stuff at a swap meet, that's not at a reseller booth. I'm talking the stuff that's sitting on the floor, sitting in the sun, who knows God how long it's been there. It's rare that you take them home and they work like a charm. And this, this console and that game to this day works very well. Not too long ago, it was in one of our videos. I think Ricky was doing some trades with Gabo and we were playing it. So it worked. What a great deal. 20 bucks for all that great stuff. Again, all this stuff, not the biggest finds, but some of our favorite finds. Here we go. That's it for this video, but again, remember, we have so many more of these to do. I was kind of working my way up the ranks of the old episodes. I only got to episode 29, and that wasn't even me like digging deep through each episode. This is me just kind of remembering some of the great times we had and some of the fun things we got, some of the exciting things we got, and some of the big come-ups that we got. Let me know if you want to see more of them. I will do more of them. I'm having a fun time filming this in my son Brixton's room, by the way. I got my microphone right here. I'm like, this is the perfect setup. This is where I edit my videos. Isn't that weird? A standing desk in my son's room. All right, it's getting hot. I'm out of here. I'm actually going to dinner right now with Chris Hurley, our old cameraman, and Ricky. We're going to have a good time tonight. So I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being a part of the channel. Uh, it means so much to me. It means the world to me. Um, you guys are home. This community is home to me. Uh, the test of time has proven it. You guys are amazing. All right, guys, we're out of here. There's no we. It's just me. I'm out. Enjoy Brixton's room. Hello. Hello. Since we're here, yeah. What was your favorite moment ever being on the show? That's what I just filmed a video about. You don't even tell you. What was like one of your oh, favorite gosh. things you ever saw or or, <laughs> or, or, or w witnessed or bought? The thing that came to mind right away was the murder weapon. <laughs>
The murder weapon. I can't remember what episode that's on, though. That's always my issue. I always try to look it up, and I can't remember where it was at. Just because I was... Did he say something like that? For 50 cents, this guy's giving us 50 cents. Can't beat that, right? Seriously. There you go. Hey, thanks, Anything dude. here, 50 cents. Uh-oh. Got any more games? <laughs> Check this out, man. Murder weapon, murder weapon, murder weapon, murder weapon. Murder weapon. Oh, hey. <laughs> Never known he needed to murder somebody. <laughs>